ladies and gentlemen. How are you all doing? Yeah. Hey, you are eating. And you are eating exciting food, too. This isn't part of the show. I'm just having food envy. What are you eating? I'm going to order some of that in the break. This is not part of the show. This is just me being hungry. <laughs> Way to be an African stereotype. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Blah Blah Blacklist. This is my second tour that I've done. Uh, was anyone here at the last tour show I did last year? Clap. Wow. <laughs> You're the only repeat customer. Well, welcome back, welcome back. I know I get my crowds from all over the place. Well, first of all, clap your hands, people who know me from Britain's Got Talent, clap. Okay, lion's share. Clap your hands, people who know me from my radio show, clap. Okay, clap your hands, people who have no idea who I am. You were dragged here. You took a gamble. You are my favorite audience members because you have no idea if I'm gonna be total shit, right? <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully, we'll get through this together. All you need to know to understand all the jokes, to get through all the jokes, is that my name is Deliso Chaponda. I am a foreigner, yes. I am from Malawi in Central Africa. Oh, is that just Malawi fans or Malawians? What's the story here? Oh, we've got actual Malawians. Hello, Malawi, how are you doing? Did my mother send you? <laughs> Sometimes my mother's always just wearing, can you just go check, make sure he's doing okay, make sure he's been eating well, and so on and so forth. Absolutely lovely. And do you live in Brighton? Oh, you live in Brighton. What, do you, what is the Malawi contingent doing in Brighton? What do you do? Social work. Oh, you're a good person. You're a good person. I like how you're clapping. We don't know if she's a good one, but, <laughs> but at least the job is the job is earnest. That's very good. Absolutely fabulous. Good to have you here. So you're Malawian, and this fellow with you is. Uh, are, are you two together? Are you are you friends? What's the story? We are together. You are together. Oh, he hold. He held up the ring. Held up the <laughs> ring. Oh, one ring to rule to rule them all. <laughs> one ring to ruin your sex life, the one <laughs> ring. <laughs> That's what Tolkien really meant. Okay, excellent, excellent. And are you also Malawian? No, I'm from Zimbabwe. You're from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, you took a Malawian. <laughs> it's okay, because I love Zimbabwe. A lot of people don't know how much I love Zimbabwe, because a lot of you know me from Britain's Got Talent, but you don't know this. Initially, I was gonna do Zimbabwe's Got Talent. But then I found out no matter how many people voted, Robert Mugabe won every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to have you, my Malawians. Are the foreigners in the room? Clap. Oh my God, we got a lot, we got a lot. So, so you at the front, where are you from? Uh, original. original from Pakistan. And how long have you been here? Your, your accent's very British. Yeah, I've been here since I was six. Oh, since you were six, okay. So, but do you go home and visit? Do you feel odd visiting? Yeah, because I always feel odd, because I'm like a Malawian, but I've traveled all my life. And when I go back, I'm like, do I fit in? No, I don't fit in, but I don't fit in in England. Where, where's, where do you fit in? You don't know. You're like me, sit. That's why my show's called sit, Citizen of Nowhere. Well, good to have you here. And this fellow is very quiet, very quiet, very well behaved. How are you doing? <laughs> have you trained him well to, 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 to be silent in public? <laughs> I, I, like, I like how you roll. I like how you, even now he's not, he's just like, okay. It's today. <laughs> well, good to have you. So we've got Pakistan. And, and where are you from? Someone else clapped there? Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. We've got Americans in the house. Hello, Americans in the house. You have provided a lot of jokes. <laughs> Over the last two years, I've, 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 I've tried to go a week without writing a new joke about America, but it's legitimately difficult. <laughs> And, and I, I think we can count you as a refugee. <laughs> that's, 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 that's how I would say. You're in the UK, you applied for asylum. They said, why? You just sent an orange picture. And they're like, OK, <laughs> accepted. Welcome. You're very welcome to the show. And all the other foreigners, I'm, I'll get you during the show. Thank you, all of you, for coming to the show, coming to this show. Um, essentially, uh, as I said, this is my, my second show. I've had a crazy year. I've had a crazy year. I think we all had a crazy. 2019, right? Now, British people, I've spoken to the foreigners, British people clap, British people clap, yes. Because yes. I think 2019 was particularly stressful for the British, because you spent the entire year yelling at each other. I had to go back to Africa just to see what a stable government looks like. You're crazy bastards. 
and now you're out of the EU. Do we have any Europeans in the room? Yes, where are you from, Europeans? Where are you from? Poland. You're from Poland. Now, this is my question. Do you feel as welcome now that they've left, or do you, do you, not so much, right? Not so much. Have you got, like, aggression? Yes. Nutters, huh? No, like, I don't know. In Brighton, did they have all the fireworks and stuff the, the, the day? Is, oh, you weren't here on EU Day. I was doing a gig, and then I just heard all these fireworks, and I was like, is this, like, you know, I was like, it's not November? Is this, is this? Is this like Guy Fawkes Day? And then I found out what was happening. I was like, I'm going to be thrown in the bonfire. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to the hotel. Well, well, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Now, now, look, it's not you, you're out of the EU, but it's not over, right? There's a year of discussion, a year of of negotiation, and I'm I'm not confident. I hate to tell you, I'm not confident because whatever side you're on, whether you wanted to leave, whether you wanted to remain, I'm not picking a side. But I think we can all agree that the actual negotiation part, so far has been kind of botched. <laughs> and I think part of the problem is everybody knows in a negotiation what you've got to do if you want to be successful is you've got to aim high, right? You don't ask for what you want. You ask for too much. And you negotiate your way down. That's what you do, right? So I'll give you a perfect example. Clap your hands. Any couples in the room? Clap. <laughs> couples. OK, a few couples. OK, Th this couple. Uh, I'll choose you two. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, what are your names? Adam and? Chelsea. Adam and? Chelsea. Adam and Chelsea. How long has this been going now? Two, two years. And what do you do with your life? Uh, Adam, the software engineer. You are what my children wanted. No, my parents wanted. <laughs> Not my children. This is what, you are what my parents wanted. They got a comedian. But I started out as uh, doing programming. OK, so excellent. So we've got Adam and Chelsea. What do you do? Exactly the same. Is this how you met? Yes. You, you, were, you were just like programming on the same project? Is that what happened? We were teaming together. Well, you did the same thing. So I guess it has to be asked, who is better? <laughs> uh, Chelsea's better? Chelsea's better? OK, good. Correct answer. OK, so this is my question. So after two years, now that we know you're a silver tongue devil, let's say after two years you decided it is time to suggest a threesome, Adam, right? <laughs> You decide it's time to produce a threesome, right? What you can't do, you can't just ask for a threesome, right? Because there's no wiggle room. There's no room for negotiation. Conversation goes threesome, no, end of story. So what you got to do is you got to aim high. <laughs> you got to come in confidently and say, I think we should bring in four women and a goat. <laughs> Straight away, the initial reaction is, of course, going to be forget the What's a goat for? And then you say, the goat is not for sex. The goat is just in the background for atmosphere. <laughs> Create a kind of sylvan feeling, you know? Have a little negotiating back and forth. Maybe you get your threesome. Same thing with the EU. I think the UK, they made a mistake to start, we want to lose the EU. You should have aimed high. <laughs> should have gone to the United Nations and said, we want to leave the human race. <laughs> <laughs> And my, my love life was complicated, complicated too the last year. I, I, was, I was dating someone who, who has a child, has a child. Now clap your hands if you've dated someone who has a kid. <laughs> Not your kid. Yeah, so, so, so. <laughs> why, why did you laugh like a sudden laugh there? Are you currently in this relationship? No. No, but you did this in the past. Yes. Okay, now why did you laugh with like, was it a very trauma? Okay, you're not with the person, right? OK, did you get along with their kid? Yes, I did. You did? Oh, how, how old was the child? 19. 19, that's why. That's, that's exactly, <laughs> get them when they're old, they're ready who they are, and they can just fuck off when you're angry, right? That legit, <laughs> legit 19, that's a safe place to go. Now, now, has anyone here dated someone who's got an adolescent? <laughs> clap. Yeah, oh, there's one. There's one there. That's, that wasn't any joy in that clap. That was just like. <laughs> It was tough, wasn't it? Because look, I was started dating her. She's got this kid. The kid's a nutter. 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, they're the spawn of Satan. <laughs> to make things worse, she wants us to be best friends, right? She starts forcing this. Neither of us is interested in the arrangement. She's going to call me and then in the middle of the conversation, force the phone into her son's hands and say, say hello to Deliso. 
neither of us knows what to say. He's like, yeah, hello. <laughs> I'm like, hi. How's school? He's like, it's okay. How's comedy? And I'm like, you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> but then things built to a climax uh, when he got in trouble at school for waving a knife around. Yeah, that's some serious trouble. And she calls me. She says, oh, my Lord, he's been waving a knife around. He's jeopardizing his future. I think part of the problem is he's grown up without positive male role models. You're in his life now. You're much better than his like, dipshit ex. You're in his life. Maybe you could, you could reach out to him. Could you try to talk to him, try to like put him back on the right path? Could you please just talk to him, Delisa, please? And I said, fuck no, he's got a knife. <laughs> He's got a knife! You talk to him! <laughs> but jokes aside, it got me thinking about the idea of role models, you know? People we look up to. Now, I grew up in African countries. Right? I grew up in Malawi, Kenya, Swaziland, Zambia, African countries. And in all these countries, it seems that all the role models, all the people we looked up to were politicians. Because it was all Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, these human rights activists, these politicians, that's who we looked up to. Then I went to university in Canada, and there, all the role models were sportsmen. It was like hockey players and stuff like that. And then some places, just musicians. And I realized it's different in, in different cultures. Now, other than the people I've spoken to, clap your hands, people. Who, if you're foreigners, clap. OK, so, so, so where are you from? Uh, Australia. You're from Australia. Aha! I don't know. Who is an Australian role model? Who are Australian heroes? You've not lived there for 10 years. But when you were a child. But it's, sport, but it's sports people. It's sports people? Yeah, is it like sports? Is it cricket? Like Ian Thorpe. Ian Thorpe, a bowler or something, right? No, he's a swimmer. He was a swimmer. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm confusing the sports. Oh, cricket and, and swimming. I was just assuming. You know, I, 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 that was a terrible stereotype. Okay, excellent, excellent. So there you go. So you had a sportsman. It was like, and, and it's, 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 he's not let us down, has he? He hasn't. Oh, yeah. No, no, because I bring that up because it's, it's very dangerous nowadays, isn't it? Right? Because every day they keep finding out horrible things about everybody else who we used to admire. Every week, someone goes down. I have to keep deleting people from my Spotify playlist. And it's never the crap musicians, is it? It's always like a good musician, and you have to look at him and be like, oh, no. And, and, and I started writing this show because, partly because, look, 15 years ago, I decided to become a comedian. What did all my friends and family say? Work hard, you can be just like Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> that one was mighty depressing, right? Not only depressing, it was surprising. Nobody can tell me they saw that one coming, right? Because he was like such a positive figure. He wasn't one of these raving lunatics who goes out. He was like boring. He used to wear Christmas jumpers. He was everybody's dad. He would talk about jello pudding. How safe did he seem, right? And then to make things worse, for black people, it hurt on another level. Because he was always the positive black celebrity. No matter what, you know, there's some people you love, like, you love Snoop Dogg, but, you know, he's been in prison for shooting someone. It's not, you know what I mean? You can't necessarily tell your kids, work hard and be like Snoop Dogg and Dogg. It's not really inspiring. But you could, Bill Cosby was always that one you could look at. You say, like, look at him, self-made man, inspiring man. Anytime anyone said the N-word, he'd come out and make a statement against it. Little did we know the N-word he hated was no. <laughs> Don't worry, you can laugh at that joke. <laughs> I see panicked white people thinking, can we laugh about that joke? He just did an N-word joke, can I laugh? That joke is about the alphabet. You're fine. <laughs> white people, you can laugh, don't worry. <laughs> but I made a list after Bill Cosby got me, right? I, I made a list of, of all the people who have let us down in the last two, three years because there's been more and more people where we've been finding out revelations, and the numbers shocked me, right? I have found 47. To also make you understand, at the beginning of the tour, it was 39. 
every week, every few weeks, someone else lets us down, right? So I made a list, and I realized I can't just talk about all these people, right? I can't talk about all these people. So I'm always just curious to the crowd, right? To the people in the crowd. Were there any revelations about a musician, a politician, or anyone you admired over the last few years that either surprised you or shocked you? Clap your hands if you can think of one which got you. Okay, I'll start with you, lady over there. Hello? Which one? Rolf Harris. Rolf, Rolf, Rolf Harris, the same one, right? The same one. Rolf Harris, tough too, because Rolf Harris was a painter. Painters are meant to be safe. Other than Hitler. But generally, you can trust the painter. Now, when you were a child, did you paint along with him? Oh, you did. Do you still have the paintings? Thank heavens, thank heavens. Do you, do you have the paintings? No. Oh, you're in Australia. Did he do the crossover? He was bigger in England than he was in Australia. Oh, he was Australian? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know this. Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> All this time I've been saying this terrible English person. They're like, he wasn't even one of ours. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Any others? Clap your hands if there's any others. Which, let, okay, someone over there, which one? Pete Townsend, okay. You have actually created number 48 because I don't know <laughs> who is Pete Townsend. Now, first of all, before I ask you, is this a massively depressing story? Yes. Okay, no, no, I'll ask you because there was one time I asked an audience member and they mentioned someone and what the person had done ended all humor in the room. So let's see, okay. First of all, what was Pete Townsend famous for? Guitarist from The Who. Okay, guitarist from The Who. Okay, I didn't know who he was, so I said who. Okay. <laughs> and what did he do? What did he do? Uh, he was found with, uh, he was found with images on his computer of, of unacceptable stuff. Okay, that's, that's very disappointing. That's very disappointing. Now, this is my question to you. Did you love The Who? I did. Can you still listen to the music? Yeah, yeah. yeah you can. You can, huh? <laughs> No, 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 it's a very interesting one because it, it puts... Well, but, but, but what if he was, he said he was doing it for research on a book. He said he was doing it for research on a book? Which has never come out. Which has never come out. <laughs> what was the book going to be about? It's like... I don't want to know, but I love the who. Oh, you love the who? You still listen to? Oh, it's a very, no, but it's a tro look, it's a dilemma. It's a dilemma, okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll make it something, like everyone in the room, Clap your hands if you thought that Michael Jackson was innocent. Clap. Okay, now clap your hands, people who have no idea. Okay. And clap your hands, people who think he was guilty. Now, the people who think he was guilty, clap your hands if you still listen to the music. You see, it's, it's difficult. Like, you were judging him for the who, but you're like, I'll still listen, I'll still listen. Maybe you don't choose it, but like if you're in a shopping center and suddenly it starts playing, remember the time you're like, oh, oh, oh why am I dancing? <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough one, isn't it, right? It's a tough one. And then also, also, there's that thing of, you know who I really feel sorry for? The Michael Jackson impersonator. <laughs> they spent years perfecting these skills and there is n these are not transferable skills. You can't be like, <laughs> go for a job at like a bank. And they're like, what's your past experience? You're like, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so actually, I will research more about Pete Townsend because uh, this is very interesting to me, per particularly the book which never came out. Oh, no. And perhaps in the second half, there may be a callback and a new joke. <laughs> so we're now at 48. I'll take two more examples. Clap your hands if you can think any two that, that surprised or, 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 or Bothered you? Clap. Yes, yeah, someone there. Which one? Ben Stokes. Ben Sto I'm at 49. I don't know what it is <laughs> about Brighton. You're bringing up examples I've never heard of. Who? First of all, what was Ben Stokes famous for? Cricket. Cricket. Okay, so he's a cricketer. Okay, cricketer. And uh, now I know why I didn't know. Okay. And what did Ben Stokes do? He did many things. He did many things. So he's not even down for, he's done many things. Okay, what's the worst one he did that won't depress everyone? Um, ag aggressive. Very aggressive. He was very aggressive, so he was fighting people. Okay, that's okay. I mean, like, you know. <laughs> no, 
that, that's okay. No, that's not criminal. That, just punching people and stuff? Okay. Okay, we can go a little worse than that. What did he do that was worse than aggression? Homophobia. Okay, so he said homophobic things. He, he acted uh, aggressively. Oh, so was the aggression and the violence towards homosexual people? Not clear. Not clear. Okay, so he let it all down. Now I can't say do you still watch cricket because he doesn't own all of cricket, <laughs> right? But but okay, so that was one who depressed you. Who again? I'm gonna have a very busy break because I'm going to read up on him, <laughs> and come back with a joke. Okay, so his name was Ian Stokes. Ben Stokes, okay, Ian Stokes would have been a very unfruitful Google search, okay. <laughs> so I will back, I'll be back with a joke about him uh, in the second half, and we will take one more example. We're not 49, I don't know what it is. You oh, we've got, what at the front? Prince Andrew, okay, I'm, <laughs> everyone's going all, 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 but this is my question, did you look up to him before? The royals a bit, and they just keep letting you down. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, I don't have a joke about him because no, very few people looked up to him. But at the same time, it says, oh, hello, welcome to the stage. You are late. You are, you are entirely welcome. Do not worry, you've not missed anything. I'm just talking about people who have disgraced us over the last few years. <laughs> You're very welcome. Welcome to the show. We are talking about Prince Andrew. How do you feel about Prince Andrew? I don't know who he is. You don't know who he is? <laughs> <laughs> are you British, sir? No. no, where are you from? Jordan. You're from Jordan. Oh, you, you, there's no need to know Prince Andrew, Queen Nor Jordan, much better than Prince Andrew as a role model. That's the way to roll. Okay. Okay. I will say this. I will say, did you watch the interview with Prince Andrew? That is one of the, like these, I think royals need some extra training on how to lie. <laughs> right, because that was, he was being asked like simple questions and he just couldn't lie. I could lie better than that. What kind of lie is, I don't sweat? You know what I mean? Like, this is not a science fiction novel or something. You're some kind of mutant with no sweat glands or something like that. I was like, come on. It wasn't even a, 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 a dip. Just say, I didn't know the man was. Well. Oh, I couldn't sweat. What the hell? <laughs> oh, now, interestingly, the examples you've brought up, they didn't really get me. They didn't really get me. Like, like, like you brought up uh, this fellow from The Who. I didn't even know. Or I didn't know Ian. Um, like. <laughs> Ben, he's you know, <laughs> somewhere there's some poor guy calls Ian Stokes. Is, you know, I'm gonna tweet about it later. He's gonna be like, oh my god, what happened to my career? Why is no one booking me to build their house? <laughs> so I wasn't a fan of the Rolf Harris. I'm not British, I'm not British. So so I, I oh well, I'm not Australian either actually. Why did no? You know, this whole tour I've been saying I'm not British when people bring up Rolf. Harris. No one corrected me and said he was, a, you are the first people who have stood up for your, your, your people. Or what, rather, you claimed him. You claimed him. <laughs> you claimed him. Oh, no, he's, he's no one. He's no. no, I think actually when people let it out, they, they don't belong. They're not human. They're, they're, they're something else. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something, actually. This is really funny. I'm oddly pedantic in this show at times when I shouldn't be. Because when I brought up Bill Cosby, there was a woman who'd brought a little child, like, no, not a child, but like a 12-year-old a, a to the show who didn't know, so she whispered explaining who Bill Cosby was. And I was like, oh, you don't know who Bill Cosby, what did she say about him? And she said, oh, I said, he's a pedophile. And I'm like, no, he wasn't a pedophile, he was a rapist. And I was like, why am I being, why am I defending him just because I'm pedantic, it must be accurate. But yeah, so none of those really got me. None of those really depressed me. None of those, even Bill Cosby, I've got to say, it was more the idea of him, right? Because he was this black celebrity. It wasn't that I was a big fan. The first one that really shook me, really made me uncomfortable, was actually a comedian who I idolized, a comedian who I loved, who some of you may know, not all of you know. Clap your hands if you know Louis C.K. Clap. Okay, quite a few of you know him. Those of you who don't know him, He's a brilliant comedian, brilliant comedian from America, genius. He'd been writing very original comedy, very productive. He's got an amazing sitcom. He's just an amazing comedian. But not only did I admire him, he was someone who I was trying to shape my career after because of how he does it. And I was like, if 
I work very hard, because he's much funnier than me. But I'm like, if I work very hard, maybe in 10 years, if I write jokes every day, I'll get to be as funny as him. So he was not just someone who I loved. He was someone who I was trying to emulate. And then it came out that he had a thing for whipping his dick out <laughs> in front of random women and just Sorry for doing it in the direction of your food. <laughs> I know it's virtual, but still. And I, I, look, I, and it was a weird thing too, because it wasn't like, some people like, how did this happen? It was even odder. The more you read about it, the more weird it gets. Because he would ask women, right? Be having a chat and say, can I whip it out? And if they said yes, you do it. So some people may say, oh, they said yes, then what's the problem? That was a big defense of him. But some of these people worked for him, right? So there was like an entire sexual harassment thing. You can't necessarily say no if your boss is like. <laughs> Look, I don't know if he did the leg thing. I just, <laughs> I, I wasn't there. I'm just extrapolating from a few articles I read. But essentially, he, it was a very messed up story. And then you've got this person you idolize. And then I had that question. I had that question, like you do with the, the Michael Jackson music, if you think he was guilty, or, or with the Who thing, where you're like, you love this person. Can you still listen to it, right? And sometimes it's easier when the person's passed away, because you're like, well, they're not alive to, to benefit from it. But if they're alive and touring, and he's touring near me, I was like, can I go watch the show? If I'm going to a show, am I saying that I am condoning public wanking? <laughs> am I condoning what he did? And you don't know what you could do. Can I still watch his videos? I had all these questions. And then also, you know, I told him, you know, I told you that he's funnier than me, right? So part of me has to consider the possibility that maybe, <laughs> possibly, that's the secret <laughs> to get to the next level because we've not conducted interviews with Jerry Seinfeld or Chris Rock. Maybe all of them know the secret. <laughs> <laughs> and then to, to compound this, last year I auditioned for Live at the Apollo and they didn't choose me. And so this year, people of Brighton, I think you gotta help me get to the next. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, that's just a joke. It's just a joke.